So as you all know, uh, we announced our first tranche of sanctions uh, in less, uh, less than a day uh, after uh, the beginning of the invasion with allies and partners from the European Union, the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan, and Australia. And what, what I, we wanted to provide to all of you today is an overview of what we're seeing uh, on, as an impact on the Russian economy. Obviously, the bite of these sanctions has not taken place yet, so this is largely in anticipation. Uh, so let me just go through a couple of these points. Uh, borrowing costs for the Russian government uh, has spiked to almost 11 percent, highest since 2015. Foreign investors are fleeing Russia. The ruble is trading at its weakest level since November 2020, one of the weakest currencies in the world. In response to inflation risk, the Russian central bank has hiked rates eight times in the past year to 9.5 percent. Uh, and Bloomberg reported, just going to cite Bloomberg there, uh, that the fortunes of Russia's super rich have tumbled $32 billion this year, with the escalating conflict in Ukraine poised to make that wealth destruction much larger. So as I started off saying, this is before the bite even takes place, uh, and this is just after the beginning. I mean, we've only had, obviously, a first tranche here, uh, but it's uh, this is a vicious feedback loop that will get more severe if Putin doesn't escalate. So as he's looking at the impact on his own economy, on his rich and wealthy oligarch friends, and on the people of Russia, uh, these are the facts. Uh, regardless of what you're hearing from the Kremlin about the impact. Also just wanted to note, because I know that we put out these sanctions when a lot was happening yesterday, just wanted to give you a little bit more detail of them. Obviously, you hopefully have seen the announcement and the statement uh, from the President about Nord Stream 2. Uh, we can come back to that, uh, but that is an additional step today. And also on banks and the announcement we made yesterday, what we did was we um, used our most powerful sanctions tool to target two major state-owned Russian banks for the first time. That is the significance. These banks can no longer, what it means is they can no longer make any transactions with the United States or Europe, and their assets in the financial system will be frozen. They are the glorified piggy bank some of the glorified piggy banks for the Kremlin, including one of them, which is a key financial institution where, uh, uh, where support military uh, finances uh, has been held. Um, and uh, this will have a significant impact on Russian leadership in the inner circle because they're state-owned uh, control, banks controlled by them. I, we also were clear yesterday, but again, there was a lot going on, so I just wanted to touch on this on this lightly, that no financial institution is safe. And the authority that was announced yesterday means that we can expand this to other financial institutions uh, in Russia, and we have every capability and capacity to do that. Second, uh, we made an announcement about uh, sovereign debt. Uh, and essentially this means, I know there's been a lot of some commentary out there, some from Russia, of course, um, that they have a rainy day fund. A rainy day fund is limited. A rainy day fund means you can only tap into it until the rainy day fund is done. Uh, the ability to, um, to purchase sovereign debt means that you can gain access to additional funding. And what we are essentially doing is cutting off uh, their ability to, uh, to tap into that from the United States and Europe. Finally, on elites, what is significant about this, and somebody asked me this question about what's different. So some of the people who were uh, sanctioned yesterday are repeat people that we have sanctioned in the past. But the additional step we took was that we sanctioned family members, because what we've seen in terms of tactics that they've used in the past is they have moved, they're very sophisticated, some of these oligarchs, uh, no surprise, they've moved money around to children, to family members, so they could still have access to it. And we wanted to reduce the likelihood of that, so that is an additional step we took. So I just wanted to cover that.